Good morning and happy Friday. We're warm to start off the week. Uh, 60 degrees right now in Jackson, 63 in Vicksburg, upper 50s in Hattiesburg for you to step out the door. We've got cloud cover and showers on the way. I'll let you know when rain arrives in your neighborhood coming up. 12 news this morning at 6 a.m. starts right now. New overnight Jefferson County investigators are searching for a wanted man. How you can help them track down the shooting suspect. A water main break leads to a scheduled water outage. How those repairs are expected to affect businesses this weekend. We went from having one of the worst highway systems in the country to having the one rated number one in the Mid-South. Following the money in a 12 News special report, find out if enough is being done to rebuild Mississippi's infrastructure. Welcome to 12 News This Morning. I'm Candace Coleman. I'm Andrew Harris. We made it to 6 a.m. on this Friday morning. New for you overnight, Fayette police are working to find a shooting suspect. Take a good look at a surveillance picture. That jacket is pretty colorful there. He goes by the nickname Callie. He reportedly shot at another man in the parking lot of a business back on November the 12th. Callie was last seen in a red Jeep Wrangler. If you know where he is, please call Fayette police. Also new overnight, Jackson police arrest a man for four counts of felony receiving and possession of stolen property. Officers arrested 28-year-old Freddie Smith after tracking down a stolen car. They reportedly found the car at Smith's home along with several other stolen vehicles. New this morning, a lawsuit is filed against the Catholic Diocese of Jackson. Two Greenwood men claim they were sexually abused by a member of the clergy in the 90s. Now, according to the Clarion Ledger, the lawsuit was filed in New York. The cousins of LaJarvis Love and Joshua Love claim brother Paul West abused them. Now, it reportedly happened when they were students at St. Francis of Assisi School. The Catholic Diocese says it doesn't comment on legal matters. Closing arguments expected today in the trial against the man accused of killing two women back in 2015. Yesterday, Zebulon James testified that his mental health problems pushed him down the wrong path. I went to Brentwood in high school um, when I suffered from a psychotic episode, and honestly, in most people's opinion, never should have been. Some people say genetics and environment. Some people might even say marijuana, but that still never proved me. Prosecutors say that James was on drugs during the night of that shooting spree. He's accused of killing Suzanne Hogan at a Jackson gas station and Christy Mitchell in the parking lot of a Richland restaurant. James is representing himself during this trial. Investigators are working to find out how two inmates died at the state penitentiary in Parchment. Now, reports say 26-year-old Michael Anderson and 28-year-old Larry Walker died Tuesday night. Both were serving time for armed robbery. Investigators are waiting for autopsy results to reveal the cause and manner of their deaths. We have a traffic alert for Richland drivers. The overnight closure for the I-220 ramp to I-55 North has been extended. The Mississippi Department of Transportation says crews need a little more time to paint the I-55 northbound bridge. That closure will be between 10 o'clock p.m. and 6 o'clock a.m. both today and tomorrow. Water outage will take place tonight on Old Can Road following a water main break. Yeah, 12 News is Linnea Lewis is live from that site right now. Linnea, how many businesses will be affected by this? Good morning, Candace. Well, nearly a dozen businesses will be affected. And if you look behind me, there's still a pond of water where this water main break is. Now, this water main break has lasted for nearly 11 days after crews were pulled away for other repairs. We first reported on this water main break November 11th. And at the time, crews were planning to shut off the water line, but that wasn't the case. An official with the city of Jackson said they did not do a good job communicating their change of plans and were forced to change the date of repairs for other emergencies. Water line repairs. Now that outage will begin at nine tonight, and once that water is restored, a cautionary boil water notice will be issued to businesses along Old Canton Road. Live in Jackson, Linnea Lewis, 12 News. Linnea, thank you for that live update. Another casing of the va another case rather, the vaping-related lung illness being reported here in Mississippi. That brings our state total to 10 cases with one death. Now nationwide, there have been more than 2,000 cases of lung illness, and 42 people have died. Until the exact cause of the illness is found, doctors recommend you stop using e-cigarettes or vaping products that contain THC and do not modify or add any substances to e-cigarette products that are not intended by its manufacturer. The deadline to apply for the free Dental Care Week is today. Dental Mission Week is hosted by the University of Mississippi School of Dentistry. Now that event is from February 3rd to the 7th. You can find out how to apply on our website, WJTV.com.
Also, starting on Monday, you'll be able to buy scratch-off lottery tickets at Mississippi vendors. So far, 1,200 vendors have been approved, but you still have to wait for Mega Millions and Powerball tickets. Those will go on sale January 30th, 2020. Now to a 12 News special report. All week long, we're focused on build, rebuilding Mississippi. Now, the American Society of Civil Engineers gave Mississippi's infrastructure a D rating. The state will receive another report card in just a few months. I hope we can bring it up a little. Mississippi has done enough to invest in much-needed infrastructure repair. That is the question. 12 News' is Gerald Harris breaks down the numbers. For Dick Hall. We're D, we probably are a D rating now, and so we went from number one in the Mid-South now to one of the worst. He says look to the past to build the future when it comes to infrastructure, pointing to the 1987 road bill. We built over 1,300 miles of brand new four-lane highway. We went from having one of the worst highway systems in the country to having the one rated number one in the Mid-South and the sixth best uh, system in the United States. To do another road bill will require a commitment for recurring revenue, not just a special session with temporary funding. That lottery may, may raise 70, 80 million dollars, something like that. We need three or four hundred million. Now that, that, that special session, certainly it helped. It, 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 it'll, it'll fix some potholes. It's not the answer. They, 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 they've, got to, they've got to get serious about it. problems that we face right now will take a, a good solution from a lot of smart people. Jacob Forrester with the American Society of Civil Engineers, the organization that gave Mississippi AD and lists Mississippi infrastructure costs in the billions, says all funding types, including gas tax and tolls, should be on the table. All of those types of funding mechanisms uh, should be considered, um, should be on the table, and I think that uh, the approach and the solution has to be specific. It's, it's, it's a very simple issue. Yeah, you got to pay for it. Well, we haven't adjusted the fuel tax since 1987. Uh, federal tax, uh, the, the Congress has not adjusted the federal tax since 1993, and our costs have gone up somewhere between 350 to 400 percent. So you can't run a business like that. From Dick Hall's viewpoint, transportation goes hand in hand with the state's economy. Mississippi needs all the prosperity we can get hold of, and it's not going to happen with an antiquated transportation system. The current uses tax is 18.4 cents per gallon. That's Gerald Harris reporting there. Tonight at 612 News will wrap up our week-long look at rebuilding Mississippi. We'll go up to Starkville where Mississippi State students are getting a lesson in building the roads and bridges of the future. Well, gun season for deer opens tomorrow in Mississippi. This year, hunters across the state will have access to 36 different drop-off locations to test their harvested deer for chronic wasting disease. That disease can kill deer, and you must take it by one of those locations. You want to make sure it's checked out. Yeah, got to know what it does to people, too. Yeah. I think that's still a question. Yeah, it is. And so you just don't want to get a hold of any of that because you just Ooh. don't know. Well, Clinton High School's Attaché Show Choir is preparing for their 40th anniversary fall review. They are out. Standing. They'll be performing December 11th through the 14th. And there they are this year. You can hear songs from the 1950s, the Broadway, and even attache favorites. Performances begin at 7.30 each night. Tickets range from $9 to $10. They can be purchased at the Clinton High School Auditorium. That is a big-time production. Look at that. Yeah, and they are wow. known all over, too. I think world-renowned. Mm -hmm, they, they are. Got to get to one of those shows. Right there in Clinton. Some real talent there, Jacob. Oh, yeah. I love those shows around the holiday season for us. Well, good morning Friday for you. Warm to start the day. Down in Capaya County, we're at 62 degrees in Hazelhurst, 62 in Crystal Springs, 60 degrees out of Georgetown this morning. Up here in Hines County, we're at 60 downtown, 59 at Hawkins Field, 63 in Bolton and Edwards, and 62 in Spring Ridge and Terry this morning. By this afternoon, storms move through, but temperatures still warm into the 70s. 73 is our high temperature at Jackson State and Lake Heiko. Here's Live IMAX 12 right now. Cloud cover across central Mississippi. But rain shower is still back over Louisiana. That's going to be headed in our direction as we go into later this morning. But right now, ahead of the rain, we have gusty winds 15 to 20, even 25 miles per hour coming out of the due south, 20 miles per hour here in Jackson. So we got the rain. Uh, be sure to grab the rain gear as you head out the door by this afternoon. They'll be moving in. Candace and Andrew. All righty, thank you so much. Here's a look at some clouds out there right now. Kind of an ominous looking sky. A live look over the city of Jackson this morning. 60 degrees to begin your Friday. We thank you for watching 12 News.
Welcome back. Your time right now is 612. A 2.3 magnitude earthquake rattles North Mississippi. It happened Wednesday night just east of Boonville near the Tennessee state line. Now, more than a dozen people reported feeling the quake as far away as Kentucky. And earthquakes are rare here in Mississippi, so I know that it was a shocker for those people, Jacob. Yeah, it's surprising, but we are part of the new Madrid seismic zone. So there's where the earthquake was up in Prentice County. It was eight miles deep uh, Wednesday night around 6:45. This is actually the third earthquake of the year. For the Magnolia State, we had one back in January. In August, uh, was one in Madison County, and then this one up in Prentice. So, uh, pretty rare to see that here in Mississippi. Right now, we're warm for you. Just stepping out the door, 63 in Vicksburg, 60 in Macomb, 58 in Prentice, and 62 in Yazoo City this morning. Your hour by hour forecast shows clouds this morning, showers picking up by later this morning, and then some scattered thunderstorms embedded in the line of showers that's going to move through this afternoon and evening. Temperatures warm into the 70s this afternoon. This is more likely before the rain arrives, upper 60s to the north. Upper 70s to the south. I'll time out the showers for your neighborhood coming up in a few minutes. All right, thank you so much, Jacob. Well, 12 News is focused on those who serve. Coming up, how a Smith County woman is dedicating her life as a first responder. Well, for the last 18 years, Heather Easterling has been there for the people of Smith County, whether dispatching 911 calls or helping fight fires. Heather is always looking out for her neighbors. Her commitment makes her the perfect recipient for this month's Focus on Those Who Serve Award. <laughs> Heather Easterling had no idea that 12 News and AMR were going to honor her with November's Focus on Those Who Serve Award. We sprung the surprise at this week's Smith County Board of Supervisors meeting. In true Heather fashion, she immediately gave the credit to others. If it wasn't for my volunteers, my law enforcement, my EMS, the Board of Supervisors, and the people of this community, I couldn't fulfill the duties of my job. 
And what a job. In addition to being EMA director, Heather is also the fire coordinator, the 911 coordinator, the flood plan administrator, and she's still on the Raleigh Volunteer Fire Department. Well, she's there. It's covered. She's got it. We just kind of back her up. Heather's known to assist neighboring VFTs as well. Day or night, 24-7, uh, Heather will respond, whether it's an auto accident in Pineville area or any of the areas around. She will respond and never hesitates a minute. She literally had her heart and soul in whatever she has done since she worked for me and as director of uh, emergency management. She's just a great employee and a great person. When the call comes out, Heather's going. And when Heather gets there, she knows what to do. Folks in Smith County can rest a little easier knowing Heather's always ready to roll. It's great, especially like when we have storms and are a disaster. You know, we've got to have someone like her to be on the background of it. And Heather's dedication extends long after a call is over. She's always there for moral support after a bad call. You can always call her any hour of the night with any problem you have, and she's going to answer that phone. She's going to be there for you. Dedication, commitment, professionalism, but most important, I think, is compassion for the citizens. Uh, you have to love it to, to do it. And my main focus is the people of my community. This remarkable lady there. Heather is also a trained drone pilot. Smith County EMA now has a drone to help with search and rescue efforts and with damage assessments. We're going to go get her lunch later this later this morning. Rather, you can see that on a later show. Let's turn it back over to Jacob. Good Friday morning, everybody. Here's our sunrise view. Notice a kind of ominous look. We have lots of clouds out there this morning. I don't know if we're going to see the sun come up over the horizon. The good news is these clouds have helped keep us warm. We're at 60 degrees right now in Jackson. Winds though out of the south at around 10 miles per hour, gusting up to 20 miles per hour. Some breaks in the clouds this morning, but overall pretty overcast. And we've got showers knocking on the doorstep now of Vicksburg in the lower delta. And we've got more rain on the way. Kind of a messy weather system that's going to be moving through this afternoon. That's going to bring us widespread shower and thunderstorm activity. Here's that forecast hour by hour for you. This afternoon is when I'm expecting some more rumbles of thunder, but the showers could start as early as 10 or 11 o'clock. High temperatures top out in the low 70s today. 73 degrees for you here in Jackson. And we got the cloud cover this morning. Showers arriving shortly in the Delta Vicksburg areas. And by lunchtime, here's 1 o'clock, heavier rainfall stretching essentially down the trace and up towards the northwest. By this afternoon, 4, 5 o'clock, that more widespread scour, shower and thunderstorm activity is going to be moving through. There's the 6 o'clock commute hour for your dinner. Driving home could be impacted by some heavy rainfall, likely in the metro. And then pushing off eventually towards the east forest, the Pine Belt, as we head towards 7, 8, 9 o'clock. So it looks like some of those playoff high school football games could be a bit wet. Not going to be a complete washout, just scattered showers and storms throughout the afternoon, and then showers linger into early Saturday morning in the Pine Belt. But by lunchtime on Saturday, we start to break the clouds up, and we're going to be dry and sunny for Saturday afternoon, which is good news uh, for all the activities we may have planned for your weekend. Rainfall forecast, though, is going to be significant. I'm thinking one inch in many spots, but up to two inches. So some decent rainfall amounts that we haven't seen in about three weeks. The rain chances stay low for Sunday and Monday, but by Tuesday, they get back up there as we head towards the travel period for your Thanksgiving. It looks like though no strong or severe storms today or next week, which is the good news. So I think uh, some plans this evening may be affected by this rain and shower activity, but the good news is by Saturday afternoon for the Capital City Classic, the sun actually may be out. Okay, that's what everybody wants to hear. Yeah, not All bad. Right. I will be there. Yeah. Check it. Well, it was a huge night for women's basketball in the Metro. Coming up on 12 News, we'll take you to Jackson State's big home opener against Mississippi State.
Time right now, 6.23 on this Friday morning. The Jackson State women's basketball team faced Mississippi State. As 12 News and Sports Director Noah Newman reports, this is the Lady Bulldogs' first time to be hosted by JSU. Happy Friday, everybody. We made it through another week. It was a big uh, sports night Thursday in the Jackson area. So let's check out some of the action. We had uh, Mississippi State paying a visit to Jackson State for the Tigers' home opener. It was 2-0 Mississippi State before it started. An administrative technical foul on Jackson State. But Amisha Williams, former five-star state recruit, fired up. She had 20 points. And Coach Reed's squad with a nice start. Mo Hamer makes it 10-7. But here come the Bulldogs. Chloe Bibby for three. It's 18-11 after one. Vic Schaefer's jacket comes off. And the ball starts going in the net. Rakia Jackson drills it. Coach Reed squad competing hard. Kaja Lucky, nice pass ahead to Summer Williams. Puts it up and in. Jessica Carter and Mississippi State would pull away. They're really good. 92-53. Great environment. A lot of fun. Great college basketball night at Capital City. All right, football now. Um, a state champion was crowned at Jackson Academy last night. Tri-County taking on Riverfield in the MAIS class. 4A state championship game. A rematch of an early season game in which Riverfield won 50-49. to Some explosive plays in this one as well. Look at Landon Harris pin it between his legs. That's a catch. Tri-County in business. Those guys were banging on the drums all night long. They never stopped. Very impressive. And Cade Shepard says, all right, I'll score a touchdown for you guys. 6-0. Riverfield responds with 20 unanswered points, including that touchdown there. It was 20-6. to Coach Rawson and Shepard talking it over, and they'd get right back in it. Dylan Hendrick. Touchdown. 20-14 to at the break. Third quarter, Tri-County takes the lead right here. Shepard scores. But Riverfield responds with nine unanswered points to win it 29 to 21. So great season for Tri County. They're your state runner ups. And your play of the day Mississippi State men's team in a matinee at the Myrtle Beach Invitational. And here goes Tyson Carter. Gets his 1,000th career point on that emphatic slam dunk. Bulldogs win 80 to 66. And they're back in action tonight today at 1.30 against Villanova. So another mad day today. All right, that's going to do it. I'll see you tonight at 10.15 for the playoff edition of the OT. Have a great day. All right, thank you so much, Noah. Jacob? we got some rain showers this afternoon. Likely going to drop about an inch of rain across central Mississippi, but the good news, it's going to be out of the way for college football for your Saturday up in Starkville. Going to be cloudy, but temperatures in the 40s for an evening kickoff for Mississippi State. Jackson State, Capital City Classic, temperatures in the upper 50s with mostly cloudy skies for that 2 o'clock kickoff. And then down in Hattiesburg, temperatures in the middle 60s with cloudy skies for an afternoon kickoff on Saturday. And it looks like the sunshine will really return by Sunday. Candace. All right, thank you so much, Jacob. And remember out there, if you want to keep up with your forecast, download the 12 News weather app. It's free in the App Store and on Google Play. 12 News will return in just about three minutes.
Good Friday morning. We can see the horizon, but a high cloud shelf is moving in. That's ahead of rain showers for this afternoon. We're at 60 degrees right now in Jackson. Windies, uh, uh, breeze out of the south, and showers on the way. I'll time out when the rain arrives in your neighborhood coming up. 12 News this morning at 6 30 starts right now. It's, it's, it's shameful, and horrible things occur every night. I, I can never take them back. Closing argument is expected today in the trial against the man accused of killing two women. What Zebulon James had to say during his testimony. Day five of the public impeachment hearings featured testimony from two more witnesses. Why one of them had a warning for Republicans. And you'll soon be able to fly from Jackson to Miami when you can start booking that flight. Welcome to 12 News. I'm Andrew Harrison. And I'm Candace Coleman. First up at 630 this morning. Fan police are working to find a shooting suspect. Take a look at this surveillance picture here. Investigators say this man goes by the nickname Callie. He reportedly shot at another man in the parking lot of a business on November 12th. Callie was last seen in a red Jeep Wrangler. If you know where he is, call Fayette Police. Also new overnight, Jackson police arrest a man for four counts of felony receiving and possession of stolen property. Officers arrested 28-year-old Freddie Smith after tracking a stolen car. They reportedly found that car at Smith's home, along with several other stolen vehicles. New th this morning, a lawsuit is filed against the Catholic Diocese of Jackson. Two Greenwood men claim they were sexually abused by a member of the clergy in the 90s. Now, according to the Clarion Ledger, the lawsuit was filed in New York. The cousins, LaJarvis Love and Joshua Love, claim brother Paul West abused them. It reportedly happened when they were students at St. Francis of Assisi School. The Catholic Diocese says it doesn't comment on legal matters. Closing arguments expected today in the trial against a man accused of killing two women back in 2015. Now on Thursday, Zebulon James testified that his mental health problems pushed him down the wrong path. I went to Brickwood in high school um, when I suffered from a psychotic episode and honestly, and most people think it never should be. Some people say genetics environment, some people might even say marijuana, but that's still never proven. Now, prosecutors say James was on drugs during the night of the shooting spree. He's accused of killing Suzanne Hogan at a Jackson gas station and Christy Mitchell in the parking lot of a Ridgeland restaurant. James is representing himself during the trial. We have a traffic alert for Ridgeland drivers to pass along. The overnight closure for the I-220 ramp to I-55 North has been extended. It's going to take a little while longer. The Mississippi Department of Transportation says crews need more time to paint the I-55 northbound bridge. That closure will be between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. both today and tomorrow. Water outage will take place tonight on Old Canton Road following a water main break. So news is Linnea Lewis is live from that site right now. Linnea, how many businesses will be affected by this? Good morning, Candace. Candace, well, about a dozen businesses will be affected, and you can still see where this water is coming up in the ground right now. Now, this has been uh, affected for the past 11 days, where crews were actually pulled away from this site to work on other repairs. And we first reported on this water main break back on November 11th, and at that time, crews were planning to shut off the water line, but that wasn't the case. An official with the city of Jackson tells us that they, they did not do a good job communicating with their change. Of plans and were forced to change the date of repair for other emergency water line repairs. Now, those that are in this area of Old Canton Road will be uh, affected until at 9 o'clock tonight, so that means that their water will be shut off at 9 o'clock. When they are finished with this area, they will be placed on a precautionary boil water notice. So make sure to stay with 12 News throughout the day as we continue to follow this construction. Live in Jackson, Linnea Lewis, 12 News. Hey, thanks for all you do out there. The House Intelligence Committee has no more witnesses scheduled to testify. That means the impeachment inquiry may be moving on into the next phase in the Judiciary Committee. Now, they'll decide whether or not to draft articles of impeachment against President Trump. On Thursday, Fiona Hill and David Holmes were the last of 12 witnesses to publicly testify. Hill criticized Republicans for pushing a national fictional narrative that Ukraine interfered in the 2016 election. The security services and their proxies have geared up to repeat their interference in the 2020 election. We are running out of time to stop them. 
And Hill and Holmes also backed up Wednesday's testimony from Ambassador to the European Union Gordon Sondland. He said President Trump wanted Ukraine to open investigations into the 2016 election and the Bidens. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said leaders are still deciding whether to pursue articles of impeachment. United States Senator Roger Wicker talks about the impeachment hearings on Thursday. Uh, if the House is going to have a debate uh, about impeachment and, and uh, take their time uh, away from the real issues that I think are facing the country, the least we can do is send a signal, a signal to our adversaries and to our allies around the world that we're going to take care of national defense. Now, Congressman Benny Thompson also commented on the impeachment inquiry. He tweeted, quote, those who are against the impeachment inquiry are willing to turn a blind eye to bribery, extortion, and constitutional violations by the president. CBS This Morning will have more on the impeachment inquiry coming up right after our show. Two Jackson State football players who were charged with armed robbery are now reinstated. According to the university, Student Affairs finished the investigation into Jakaiser Glass and Carl Jones. Both have been cleared to play after being suspended. The two were arrested by campus police last week after an altercation on campus. American Airlines will soon offer limited nonstop flights from the Jackson Airport to Miami. The flights will be offered on Saturdays and Sundays from June until August of 2020. You can start booking your flights on Monday. Make some summer plans. Well, the 13th annual Jackson Black Pride Health Symposium is today. That event encourages LGBTQ communities and allies to end new HIV transmission rights and celebrate health awareness. Now, the symposium is from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Hilton Garden Inn Hotel in Jackson. Water levels will be lowered once again at the reservoir. Yeah, they're going to go down. The Pearl River Valley Water Supply Board voted in favor of that decision after that invasive plant, Giant Salvinia, turned up again. Water levels will drop to 295 feet. Now, the lower level will allow crews to go out and burn the Salvinia. The decision was also a compromise, though. Some leaders wanted to lower the level down to 293 feet, but business and homeowners believe that that is just too low. 293, we were looking at a minimum of $50,000 of lost revenue for those slips. Um, and un unknown damage to the piers could be in hundreds of thousands of dollars. At 295, we potentially have, uh, we might lose maybe $10,000 on slip rental. But you know, we can, we can deal with that. Water levels will be dropped on December the 13th. Leaders hope to remove the giant Salvinia by March. Atmos Energy wants to warn you about possible scammers. You can protect yourself by always asking for an identification badge. Employees will not collect cash payments in person. Beware of fake emails that request immediate payment of your bill. And do not click on any suspicious links in the email. Starting next week, 12 News This Morning will be focused on the holidays. We have a few tips to get you Black Friday ready. Also, how you can prepare for travel and the holidays and how to get ready for that Thanksgiving Day meal. Make sure to tune in next Monday at 4.30 a.m. for everything you need to know. Thanksgiving week almost upon us. Yeah, so yeah. what are you bringing to the table? Oh, for me, uh, probably not much. Maybe a can <laughs> of Mountain Dew, uh, cheese and crackers. I could do that. Okay. Let's turn it over to Jacob. I'm going to work on a little corn casserole over here. We'll see mm -hmm. if that's any good. Oh, please bring that in. Okay, yeah, we can try it. Cloud cover moving across central Mississippi this morning. Shower activity up in the Delta Yazoo City, seeing some light rain this morning. Some thunderstorms back in Louisiana. That could be headed in our direction by this afternoon. Right now in Macomb, a gorgeous morning. Some clouds out there. We're at 57 degrees. Winds coming out of the southeast at around 3 miles per hour. It's rather breezy across the state this morning. We're at 56 there in Fernwood and Magnolia, 56 in Osaka, and 57 in Macomb and Summit. Up in Rankin County, 59 in Brandon, 60 in Flowood and Richland, 57 in Puckett. So here's the winds, 20 to 25 mile per hour wind gusts here in Jackson up in the Delta. So breezy this morning as you're getting ready to head out the door. Not needing the rain here this morning, but by this afternoon you certainly will with showers and thunderstorms highs in the 70s. I'll time out the rain for your neighborhood in a few minutes. All righty. Thank you, Jacob. Well, a Michigan house is on the precipice, literally. Coming up on 12 News, what's causing it to go over a cliff?
Time right now, 641 on this Friday morning. A house on a bluff above Lake Michigan could topple into the lake at any moment. Take a look at this video. It looks like a nice enough house. Beautiful view back in the day, but high levels of erosion along the lake are to blame. Heavy storm moving through that area today could be the last straw. Nothing is left in the building and the utilities are shut off, so town leaders believe the impact of the collapse will be limited. It's going to go over the side any minute now, Jake. Ooh, that's an ominous precipice there, Andrew. Oh, we got cloud cover this morning here in the central Mississippi. Some high clouds out there. We can't see the sunrise this morning. I, it's up. It happened around 634. The clouds help keep our temperatures warm overnight. So we're at 60 degrees right now in downtown. And the winds are coming out of the south at 8 miles per hour, gusting up to 20. So a little bit breezy as you step out the door. Uh, we're seeing the clouds move in, and we may see some breaks, some sunshine. But it looks like some of the showers now heading towards Vicksburg. Maybe some light scattered showers in the Delta. I think that's not all reaching the ground this morning. As you head out the door, you're not going to need the rain gear. Everyone's dry for now. But by lunchtime, temperatures warm to the 70s. And that's when the rain will likely begin for much of central Mississippi. It's going to start first off to the north. So cooler highs 69 in Yazoo City and Carthage, 73 for Jackson, 75 down in Macomb, upper 70s in the Pine Belt when the rain arrives later this evening. So here's the shower activity 9 a.m. in the Delta Vicksburg. Moving towards the Jackson Metro by lunchtime. Here's one o'clock. Some heavy rainfall along the trace. Just scattered showers, some embedded rumbles of thunder, but no severe weather. And then by five o'clock, uh, some widespread scattered heavy rainfall. And here's seven o'clock in the Metro. Heavy rainfall could impact your drive home, dinner plans, and uh, the playoff high school football games we've got going on. And those scattered showers will continue into the evening and overnight hours and linger into early Saturday morning in the Pine Belt. But by late Saturday morning, the rain ends and clouds start to clear. And Saturday afternoon, the sunshine returns to central Mississippi. So that's going to be nice for us. We do get a lot of rainfall out of this, though. One to even two inches of rain. So it's been about three weeks since we got rainfall over an inch. So some significant rainfall in the forecast. Some heavy rain at times. The good news is, though, we dry out for Sunday and Monday. Another round of rain possible on Tuesday, heading towards your Thanksgiving travel plans. Just a heads up on that. The good news is, today or next week, nothing looks to be any severe weather. Uh, it's just going to be some rain showers that might inconvenience your drive. Uh, and so this evening, it's likely going to have a high impact on everybody's Friday evenings, unfortunately. You know what I'm liking to see? That Monday forecast. It's my birthday. Whoa! So, hey, um, perfect birthday on, weather. On Monday, yeah. There we go. I'm That's excited my guess. about that. It's the first time hearing <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, happy birthday in advance, Candace. I have a feeling you won't be here Monday. Well, some in Congress say it's time to overhaul the nation's marijuana laws. Coming up on 12 News, what leaders are trying to do about that.
Time right now, 647. Senate lawmakers pass a short term spending bill to avoid a government shutdown ahead of a midnight deadline. The vote was 74 to 20. That bill will now go to President Trump, who's expected to sign it. Now, earlier in the week, the House passed a short term funding bill to extend funding through December 20th. Lawmakers still haven't reached a bipartisan agreement on the 12 regular annual appropriations bills needed to fund the government. It's a reversal of an agreement that most of us thought we had um, toward the end of the summer when we agreed on, on budget numbers and, and then we, we return uh, uh, after the August break and find that uh, not everyone on the Democratic side uh, seems to have understood the agreement as, as uh, the clear writing indicated. Now, if and when Trump approves the stopgap measure, it'll give lawmakers more time to negotiate. For the first time in history, a congressional committee votes to decriminalize marijuana. Some lawmakers say the bill does not address critical issues with marijuana and does not protect children. That bill, though, was likely to pass in the Senate. YouTube can make changes to better protect children and others from harassment. Starting in January, the site will disable comments on videos that are identified as kid-focused. They're also looking at stopping targeted advertising to children. And feel free to offer a bigger bird this Thanksgiving because turkey prices are their lowest holiday level since 2010. Who knew? This according to an American Farm Bureau Federation survey. It says the price of turkey dropped more than 4% from a year ago. Prices never go down. Let's get, let's get a big old bird there, Jacob. Yeah, we can all share a turkey. That sounds good for us. Good Friday morning. We got cloud cover this morning. And rain showers are not far away. I want to show you this is kind of our first rain in southern Issaquina counties near Eagle Lake this morning. Most most of us are dry as you head out the door, but that rain's going to be arriving over the next couple of hours. Temperatures warm, 60 degrees in Jackson, 61 in Clinton, 59 in Ridgeland, and 59 down in Florence. But winds are gusty as well, 15 to 20 mile per hour wind gusts, so a bit breezy this morning out of the south ahead of this rainfall. Forecast for today shows temperatures topping out in the 70s, 73 here in Jackson, and showers midday, early afternoon, and then some rumbles of thunder possible as we head towards the evening commute for you. And the rain's going to wind down Saturday morning, which is good news for the capital. Capital City Classic, 2 o'clock kickoff there at Venice Memorial Stadium. Temperatures in the 50s with mostly cloudy skies. That is good news for the weekend and more sunshine returns by Sunday. Candace and Andrew. All right. That is all right to me. Thank you so much, Jacob. A water main break leads to a scheduled water outage coming up on 12 News. How repairs are expected to affect businesses in that area this weekend. But first, here's a live look at our live eye at Petty Pet Conda. That's out in Ridgeland for you. Traffic's moving smoothly. We do have the sky looking nice this morning, too. And the wind is blowing. Look at that flag just out going out there. Yeah. 6.50 is your time. Thanks for watching 12 News.
Welcome back. Your time right now is 6.53. Here are the six things you need to know before you head out the door. New overnight, Fayette police working to find a shooting suspect. Here's his picture from surveillance anyway. Investigators say this man goes by the name Callie. He reportedly shot at another man in the parking lot of a business back on November the 12th. Closing arguments are expected today in the trial against the man accused of killing two women in 2015. Zebulum James is accused of killing Suzanne Hogan at a Jackson gas station and Christine Mitchell in the parking lot of a Richland restaurant. Overnight closure for the I-220 ramp to I-55 North has been extended. That closure will be between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. both today and tomorrow. Now, because of a water main break on Old Canton Road, there will be a water outage tonight. Crews will work to fix the water main, and the outage will start at 9 o'clock tonight. The area will be under a boil water alert after the main is fixed. American Airlines will soon offer limited nonstop flights from Jackson Airport to Miami. The flights will be offered on Saturdays and Sundays from June until August of 2020. You can start booking your flights on Monday. Gun season for open for deer hunting opens on tomorrow. Now this year, hunters across the state will have access to 36 different drop-off locations to test their harvested deer for chronic wasting disease. Now here's a look at what's coming up on CBS this morning. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. The White House says President Trump welcomes an impeachment trial in the Senate. We'll look at what's next and talk to his former chief of staff, Reince Priebus, about who he thinks influences the president most on foreign policy. Plus, the rising cost of cars. We investigate why new vehicle prices have spiked and how Americans are racking up debt to afford them. We'll see you at 7. Yeah, why is a new car like 40 grand these days, Jacob? I don't know, too much money. We got some clouds out there this morning for your Friday, but we're dry for now. Showers increase uh, for this afternoon, along with some rumbles of thunder. I'll show you the eight day forecast and when the rain exits coming up in just a few minutes. Yeah, you'll yeah. feel that. I'm, I'm about to buy a new one. I'm trying to keep it below 300. Yeah. I, I didn't really have any credit, like, you yeah. know, and so I had to go with what I could go with. But the good thing was, it's through my loan is through Capital One. So mm -hmm. it's through one of the better. Um,
Thanks for sticking around with us. Your time right now, 6.58. Time for one last look at traffic out there, and away we go. How about I-55 north of Fortification Street on this Friday morning? Traffic, what you'd expect, heavily traveled both north and southbound, but folks are getting where they're going for now, Jacob. Uh, that's good news. We got clouds, but rain is on the way. Here's Live IMAX 12. It's going to be arriving shortly. Here's the eight day forecast 100% chance for widespread showers today, clearing out for Saturday afternoon. And Candace got you some good birthday weather there hey, on Monday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my birthday on Monday. I won't be here. I'll be outside enjoying that nice Enjoy. 66, though. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Jacob. Remember, news, weather, and sports are available 24 7 at WJTV.com and on our news and weather apps. Engage us on Facebook, Twitter, even Instagram. CBS This Morning is next. But first, Devin Gray has this morning's Living Local. Okay.